Would like to talk about Bitcoin real quick here before the open and why I think this is it. This is the beginning right here as well as miners. So uh, before I do so, go ahead and check out ztrades.net. Come to our terms and conditions page. If you agree to it as well as our disclaimer, feel free to join the Discord. <clears throat> Let's jump right into it. I want to pull up Mara. In fact, you know what I should do here is... Um, you know, it's like kind of the same setup as right here in a sense, not the same, but we are respecting the trend line. Let's go ahead and jump over to TOS here real quick. We're going to go to Bitcoin. We're going to look it up. We're going to go to the weekly. And let me get the stupid open interest off there. I cannot stand it. I don't know why it's there. So let's take a look. We respected the 50 the whole time. Every time it kissed it, it sucked up and and, uh, and respected it. We stayed within the channel other than right there. Over here, just take a look at this. Now, I've done this a thousand times, but I'm going to do it again. Remember, at the average time after halving, everyone that doesn't know squat about crypto was like, wow, the halving was a dud. It's, Bitcoin has, number one, never went on a halving, ever. It's never went on a halving. It always goes six months afterwards, around average time, 170 days. Where are we at right now? 177 days since the Bitcoin happened. So we're right on cue. So let me go ahead and pull this up real, real quick here. There's something else I wanted to exit. Um, let's go back to TOS. You can see over here, when we the first time we ever closed outside of this channel, we had came a long way. 52k to 67. That is a large move, a very large move. We're talking about what is that? Um, uh, $15,000 move. And then it also had a one, two, three reversal. Well, we only made it this low this time, and it's coming from right there. Right? It came from right there. We did not have a giant body that closed down there, it wicked, it closed right there. And we're now pushing out of it. I think we're going to go. So we'll see what happens. Ready? Lower low, lower low, lower low, lower low, higher low, higher low. And we're at, we're kissing and hugging the top right here of this channel. And this is why I think we're going to go now. Based on uh, history, it's never not went. So all you Bitcoin bears, you're, go ahead, do this. All you Bitcoin bears, do this. If you're so bearish, I challenge you. You probably sh you will lose money if you do this, in my opinion. To short it, go short on Bitcoin. Go ahead, put your money where your mouth is. Do it long term. If you're so bearish, you'll lose money. You will lose money. So, one of the reasons I like Bitcoin so much is let's say that there was a mini World War Three or something like that. Companies are disrupted and they've lost money. Bitcoin hasn't lost money. It just continues. If all the nodes go offline and no more is mined, the second one node comes online, everything's stored there on the blockchain, Bitcoin is active again. It just goes dormant. Even if it's 50 years, it goes dormant. Are companies going to go dormant? No, they, a lot of them won't exist. Look what happened to small businesses during COVID. Um, let's jump over to miners. So all, also, before I do so on top of that, let's go over here to the monthly. And this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Look at this. Come on. This wants to stretch up at least to 70, in my opinion, on the Bitcoin futures here. We have a cup in handle. How is this bearish? <clears throat> Everyone's pointing to like 18K, 31. When has that ever happened after the halving? You know, 170 days after the halving, it does the opposite. And a lot of you haven't done your own research. So that, you know, I have to constantly argue and be in arguments with the Bitcoin bears. So we've got 50 calls. This is wild for Mara for January 2026. We could have a nice pop here. A, a lot of these are heavily shorted, like really heavily shorted. Riot, for example, and they were right to short it. You know, they were doing offerings and uh, diluting the shares. You know, they're doing it for the right reason to... Uh, they had to come up with a lot of money to build the Gigawatt factory there south of Dallas, building the biggest mining factory ever. 
So I still think I've been selling the sevens and I was a bit scared over here. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, I'm holding it no matter what. I'm just not going to be adding any more riot. I don't want that. Wolf has a setup as well here on the daily. We can elongate these charts to make it look a bit better. Um, but anyways, we have a setup here on Wolf. I would like to see this break out and go higher. I, I'm not going to say that we're going anywhere, any parabolic moves till late December. That's where I think that it'll happen. Right now, yeah, it could be it could be semi bullish, but overall, I don't think we're going parabolic until late December. Possibly start picking up steam in late November. I think it's going to chop around and remain bullish, but kind of slow on everything. But let's take out uh, take a look at BITF. We've got a setup there as well. Um, Mara's already popping pre market here. We just legged up almost a dollar, like vertical. Coin. This isn't a miner. I know it's not a miner. Let's take a look at the calls over here. We've got $300 calls coming in. We've got $300 calls coming in for December. $360 calls. The balls on that person. $330 calls for June of 2025. $300 calls for June of 2025. 270 calls for August of 2025. And then we've got some at the monies for the balls on this guy for <clears throat> December 18th. Pretty wild. Let me go back to Wolf here and see what else we got on the... Yeah, there we go. $10 calls for January 2026 coming in. Um, lots of calls over here. The 10s for 2025. Holy crud. The 7s, okay. That's a little bit... I can understand that a little bit more. That is wild. That's very wild. Let's take a look at Square. When the heck this thing's going to go. It's already starting to go here. Look at this. December 26th, 105 calls. The premium on this is usually really jacked up. 110 calls for March of 2025. That may, that actually could do it. Let's take a look at the weekly on Square. Every time I've tried to touch this in the meantime, it just... This is one of those, you know, hype, despair, right? Return to normality charts. Um, a lot of stuff have, has this from COVID. You know, one of those that'll actually do it, in my opinion, is Upstart. This thing, I think, is going to come roaring back. Like, absolutely roaring back. I don't think we're going to see that high. We could easily see 70. We could even see 150 on this. Uh, this is a bit off topic, but this is a rate-sensitive stock, and they make money from that. That's a whole other topic. What else was I, what else was I going to pull up here? Beto, guys, you know, it has an awesome dividend. I need to remove these channels. It has an amazing dividend. But uh, what, what's going on here? This is still charted from when I entered. I entered, uh, where was that? No, I entered right over here. I entered right there in the 14s. So it says that I'm down in, TO, in uh, Fidelity. It says I'm down like $500 when I bought it at 14 and it's at 17. I've gotten almost 70 free shares. Now it's counting at buying those shares at a higher price. So it's calculating it wrong. Look at the amount of money you put in. You know, this is about a 45, uh, 40 to 50 percent dividend around 45. You look at how much money you put in. What is it at now? It's on drip. I put in fourteen hundred dollars. It's at twenty nine hundred. I've gotten over everything that I've put in it back. I'm going to let it run for maybe. Maybe one or two more months, maybe in I think in December, I'm going to turn drip off when it starts to recover. That's where I am going to go ahead and cover. That's when I'm going to go ahead and let me see if I can chart this properly here. Um, that's when I'm going to go ahead and get out of my holdings. Get out what I put in it, excuse me. Um, I'll go ahead and, and you know, I put, I put 1400 in, I'll take 1500 out. I'll let the less rest ride. Take fifteen hundred out. I've made a hundred dollars. That's secured. I don't know where I'm going to roll that money, um, and uh, I'll do that right at right as we get our dividend in January. I'll do that. I'll get my money back out of it. At that point, nothing matters. I expect at some point Bitcoin is going to have to run parabolic and go vertical and have a lot of strength for this to break out and really come back up to that twenty five twenty eight range. If that happens. Oh my goodness, if we could even see 35 with the amount of shares that have accumulated, this was an amazing investment because it's been on drip. It's been buying the dips each time, 
right? So the, sh the amount of shares that I'm getting is a lot. It's immense. So yeah, we break out. You can imagine if I was able to buy at nine, you know, throw $10,000 at that and have that triple on top of the 50% dividend. I mean, you could just turn the drip off and, in a, you know, four or five months, you've gotten back what you put in it. So um, maybe a little bit longer than that. It still kind of looks like crap. It looks like it's going to collapse down in this area. At this point, it doesn't matter because the dividends I'm receiving is better. We're just going to need Bitcoin to really, really, really run here. Um, MSTR, I'd, I'd already called this for an investment. Um, on top of that, they're doing a Bitcoin bank. Good Lord. Look at this. This box right here, it was building, respecting the EMAs, respecting the box right there. EMAs in a, in a sense right here. I had the wrong EMAs up, by the way. And uh, and we finally broke out. I expect MSTR probably go to $300 plus by mid to late 2025, as long as there's no war. So I'm going to come over to, uh, let's see if I can come over to Google. Well, we'll do that on another video on how to um, judge the cycle, judging the cycle only, no technical analysis, because I didn't do technical. I am doing TA now, but it was based on what it does every single time. It is the most predictable asset and out there and one of the best performing assets out there. So I don't know why people aren't it's like, do you hate money? I don't get it. Um, you want to buy a year before the halving and forget about it. When there's violent drops, that's when the best time, in my opinion, to buy is 380 calls coming in on MSTR for December 25th. We got $320 calls for January 2027. Wild. June, we have $390 calls. So they're they're buying them up there. We'll see what happens here. That's a pretty hefty premium uh, over here. 1.9 million for the 320s. Crazy. Crazy. So Anyways, guys, wanted to do a quick update. Um, I'm not going to be selling any more covered calls. I may go ahead and cover my BITF covered call because, you know, it's uh, I may just hold it. It doesn't really matter. I'm only doing it on 100 shares of the shares that I own. Uh, outside of that, the rest, I'm not going to write any more covered calls. I will write covered calls as a means to exit whenever we're at an appropriate level on Mara. So if you guys like this content, make sure to like and follow for more.